A lot of power is moving now and things are changing. Change is good. I want to bring you into these feelings. I want to raise you up to these vibrations through this talk, through these affirmations. I want to bring you into my world and show you what it's like to move and flow along with life. It's amazing how much I've noticed coming up, past limiting beliefs, coming up as thoughts about what I believe to be the source, that which is life among all things within our DNA, within the plants around us. Life at its fullest. Life that goes beyond what is physical. It goes beyond what we can explain. So I had this really great thought. It's truly up to me. I'm the only power and I get to believe what happens to make it happen. Because belief causes creating. Because it's all up to me. I am the one power completely connected to all of the other humans, the gods and goddesses of this world. All these humans who are full of power. I am one with you. We are one. And there is only one power at work. And it is within our consciousness, within my own very individual consciousness, connected to all of the consciousness around me through vibration connecting, telecommunicating with plants, animals, and people, with the earth itself. And of course, our earth is a small piece of our solar system, and our solar system is a small piece of the galaxy that we live in, and the galaxy is a small piece of the universe, and so there is more power at work here. But the important piece is that we all have connection to it within us. We hold the power of the entire universe within us because it's not a power that takes form. It is not a power that needs to fit inside of our body. It's not a power that needs to have the entire universe to fill up even though it does. It goes beyond our ability to explain it. Regardless, as I was having this wonderful thought that I am the one power I had a limiting belief that came up that I don't want to believe anymore. And it's important when we think these thoughts to recognize them, recognize their absurdity and say, no, this is not a belief that I want to carry with me into the rest of my life. And the thought was, yeah, you might think you're the one power, but what about this recent injury that you had that you didn't have any control over? And didn't that put you in your place? Didn't that show you who's really in control and how it's not you? And that thought was not true because yes, I actually did create that injury. It was my choices that led up to it. It was my belief system that led up to it. It was something that I was attracting. Our doubt will manifest in the physical realm in order to bring our attention to it. And I can talk more on this later. But it was a limiting belief of this idea of the source that I had that was saying, you're not the one power. There is power external and it's causing you to experience things that are going to put you in your place and you shouldn't think of yourself as a goddess. But that is not true. And that is a limiting belief that came from a belief system that I once held, but I no longer feed into. Even if I have those thoughts come up because the beliefs that we've held in the past, they are integrated into our mind very deeply. They are wired into our neuron pathways. So yes, we might have those thoughts come up based on habit, based on the past, but it's the present moment where we have our power and can say, I choose not to believe this. And the next time if it comes up, it's so much easier to see the flaws in it, to see its absurdity. Oh yeah, that's not true. I don't need to keep believing this way. I'll call it out and say, that's an awful thought. And my goal is to think what is lovely, to think what is pure, to think what is loving and true and honest. The old thoughts are outdated, okay? So having the background and the belief that I have had growing up, I had a verse come to mind, and I'm paraphrasing a little here because I'm moving into this feminine side, whereas a lot of what I was taught was very masculine. And so here is the words that came to mind, which I do believe are so wonderful and beautiful. And it says, 
Woman plans her way, but goddess directs her steps. And at one point, this may have meant that I can make my plans and they're going to be thwarted and that I really don't have control. But now I realize that what it means is I am the power. I plan. My conscious, logical mind makes my plans based off of the things I desire and the life experience that I have lived. But it is my subconscious and my intuition that shows me the way. It doesn't mean that my plans will be overwritten or not granted or that they're wrong. It just means I have guidance that supersedes the logical conscious brain. And that is what I want to trust. It is the super conscious. And so the injury was to knock out subconscious beliefs because even the smallest bit of doubt will manifest to draw attention to it in order to cause us to release it because that doubt energy desires in and of itself to be purified and the subconscious mind desires to be purified because only in purifying the mind can we truly enjoy the things we receive in a fulfilling and satisfying way this is why we are told do not conform but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and that is another verse that came up from my childhood that still has so much beautiful truth in it and so it is deciphering what do i choose to believe what serves me and what doesn't and it's nice for me personally to have these roots in the bible to some extent but i am also very safe to explore spiritual concepts and to go outside of the bible which is something that i used not to believe for so long, I was trying to speak about my art in a way that unified uh, the title and label Christians with those who wouldn't profess that title. But now I realize that none of us know anything and we must just let everyone believe as they wish. And I do wish we could be unified in our collective consciousness, regardless of beliefs, religious or spiritual or physical. For we are all on different parts of our growth journey towards purification of the mind. And it's not that we were born evil and sinners and need to be full of shame and guilt and need to be purified, but that whatever we picked up of the shame and guilt along the way through childhood or adulthood, all that wants to be set free and released. And that's what I mean by purification. It's not that we need to be purified because we were evil. It's that this life has caused us to pick up beliefs that don't serve us and that is just part of life and it's time to release them our love and our belief and faith wants to be set free and we do this by daily taking small steps towards pushing through fear moving past it you feel it and you move past it and trusting ourselves and listening to our inward guidance that becomes clearer and clearer and more obvious every time we listen to it. This is my spoken letter to you, to the world. And we are telepathically communicating as we listen to these words now. Even with those who aren't listening, we are all connected. And so with me, out loud say, I am the only power. I am all the power. I am all in all. I am that I am. And if you feel comfortable, you can even title yourself, I am the source. I am Lady Goddess. I am God. I am amazing. And so here, let's go into a little bit of affirming. And so say out loud, I'm about to make a statement of belief. What is it? Right now, out loud, what do I say I believe? And what I choose to believe comes to me. I choose to believe in my power. And what I choose to believe comes to me instantly. 
And I'm ready for it because I have no doubt, I truly believe I have the tools and resources all within me. And these are your words that I'm speaking now. And I know I am the creative force and power, and I am all loving energy. I love my beliefs, and my beliefs serve me. I love who I am, and I worship myself. I praise myself. I'm proud of myself. I build myself up. I am empowered beyond my wildest dreams. I am blessed beyond my wildest dreams. I am so thankful for the people in my life and being surrounded by so many wonderful, happy people. And I am so grateful that I have everything I need and desire and then some. And I am so thankful I get to spend my days pursuing my perfect role in this life, bringing healing and love to others. And I am on top of the world. I am on it. I am alive. I am on top of my throne. I say what goes in life. And there is no need to tone myself down in any way because I am truth. And I have found my own true nature, the me I always knew I could be. And there is nothing that could knock me off my throne except for doubt. And so I choose to release all doubt daily, releasing more and more every time something manifests to bring my attention to the doubt that is seated in my subconscious. I pay attention to it. I work through it. I move through it with grace. And so I release all doubt to truly believe, to truly have faith, to truly know deep in my heart this knowing feeling. And this knowing and belief and faith come by cultivation each day trusting a little more, taking note of the ways that I show up for myself, taking note of the changes, trusting more and more, a little more each day, a little goes a long way, taking note of the ways that I answer myself, taking note of the way that I show up differently, and all the blessings that pour in and upon my life, expressing deep thanks down through all of my bones, expressing my thanks, directing it inwards, directing my gratitude inwards throughout all of my cells in the body, seeping in gratitude and love. You know, I've noticed it's really important for me to take time to process and allow myself to get into the flow and to rest. And all of this creates so much more abundance and joy in my life than any productivity ever could. And there's really no use in publishing my struggle in order to be seen or validated. Because I validate myself, and I do not need validation for a self-image of a struggling me, because that's not the real me. The real me is pure light and energy, and this self-image needs no validation. I don't need validation because I believe in my heart and I know that others see the light in me and they understand the darkness in themselves. They don't need to see the darkness in me to understand that this light I embody was born in darkness. Wisdom is respected. Wisdom is respected even when you don't know all the details. Wisdom is respected because we all know it came from living life and experiencing life to the fullest in all directions. We don't respect a victim actor, and I've been there in my life before. So even if someone is victimized, truly, we don't like when they dwell there or change their self-image to victim. That's not wisdom. Yet how often have any of us been stuck in victim-like attitudes in order to be seen or get attention? I know I have. Maybe it's well-needed attention. If we don't give attention to ourselves, we do need it from others. Even though if we get it from others, it's not going to satisfy that empty space that only we can fill with our own attention, with our own love. Nobody wants to be someone else's hero, especially if they're not being their own hero, like so many humans refuse to be. Like, this is our choice. We choose to be our own heroes. We are all heroes. We are all our own heroes. Say it now, I am a hero. 
I am my own hero. I am my own savior. That deep hero part of us is something worth getting in touch with. Now, in my past, I couldn't get in touch with that inner space because I believed it was outside of me. How are you going to get in touch with something inside of you if you think it's outside of you? I believed that that guidance was in the Bible or in an idea that I once held of God or Jesus. Even Jesus himself said, I am within you. <laughs> Paraphrasing a little bit, he said, you must eat me, my blood and flesh, let us be one. But when I was taught to believe in this external thing and to weigh my every decision and belief by what was written in an external place, then that really does breed disbelief in self and distrust in my own guidance system. It breeds distrust in my emotion. Back when I first was dating my husband seven years ago, I had so much convolution come up in me because I didn't trust my love for him because I thought it was disobeying God. Now that might seem crazy to some, but the way that I was taught caused me to distrust my love that I felt for others because of their belief system, because of something external to me, I didn't feel that I could trust myself because, to be more clear, his belief system differed from mine and I was taught that that would lead me astray. And I think that organized religion teaches not to go outside of their belief system because oftentimes it really will lead you away because there is so much more expansion to be had of the mind, of your soul, when you have free exploration. But of course, this is not to say that those who hold religious beliefs are not also following their inner guidance because there was a piece of that in the belief system that I was taught and I was taught a little bit about how to trust myself. However, it was um, two-sided and some things didn't coincide but they collided and if you're being taught to trust the spirit within you as well as the spirit outside of you that is two differing points and created a lot of confusion in my life for a lot of years and so back to what i was saying how can we not trust our own love love is our deepest most true emotion and we must trust our love how could we believe in the wrongness of our bodies? Why would such an all-loving, powerful creator, the artist of the world, the artist of worlds, the artist of galaxies, why would some entity like that make an imperfect body? Why would every human on the planet have beautiful sex organs if they were not something perfect and wonderful to be enjoyed and loved? And trusted we can trust our gut instinct we can trust our sexual emotions when they are purified of any fear and doubt because obviously harm has been done to people and we do want to be acting out of truth and love but when we're taught not to trust those pieces of our body then of course we're gonna have doubt convolution and fear and evil twisted uses of those organs and of those emotions but i do not want to bring attention to anything that i dislike for i could go on and on about those things and it would help no one i want to bring attention to our own light and love i want you to feel the pure beauty of your body of your gut of your intelligence of your heart of your sex of your joy of even your skin of your muscles your ability to move and beyond that what is not physical but yet resides in this body for now at least as far as we know as far as we can understand here we are this non-physical piece our bodies are a temple to this non-physical love 
and light and energy. And it is up to us to choose the beliefs that serve us, to choose to believe and think the thoughts that bring us the most benefit and joy and do the same for all around us. For when we are doing that for ourselves, we do it for everybody around us. In this space of our body, we have the ability to raise our vibrations, to raise the cellular structure of our being. It's so easy to understand when we do it in the mind because we know that the way that we feel emotionally changes the chemicals in our brain and vice versa. Certain chemicals in our brain will change how we feel emotionally. And it is like that with our entire body. When we change how we feel and what we believe, it does change our body all throughout. And so now, Again, say your affirmation to yourself. What do you believe? I believe. I choose to believe this. And enjoy some silence. <laughs> 